Hillary Clinton gave a big foreign policy speech yesterday, and she really, really went after Donald Trump. Let's listen. Donald Trump's ideas aren't just different. They are dangerously incoherent. They're not even really ideas, just a series of bizarre rants, personal feuds, and outright lies. He is not just unprepared. He is temperamentally unfit to hold an office that requires knowledge, stability, and immense responsibility. This is not someone who should ever have the nuclear codes, because it's not hard to imagine Donald Trump leading us into a war just because somebody got under his very thin skin. We cannot put the security of our children and grandchildren in Donald Trump's hands. We cannot let him roll the dice with America. He believes we can treat the U.S. economy like one of his casinos and default on our debts to the rest of the world, which would cause an economic catastrophe far worse than anything we experienced in 2008. He has said that he would order our military to carry out torture and the murder of civilians who are related to suspected terrorists, even though those are war crimes. He says he doesn't have to listen to our generals or admirals, our ambassadors and other high officials, because he has, quote, a very good brain. <laughs> he also said, I know more about ISIS than the generals do. Believe me. You know what? I don't believe him. Damn. So, look, I told you guys from the beginning that uh, every step of the way in this election, I plan to be ruthlessly honest with you. Uh, I really, really dislike Hillary Clinton, and I really, really dislike Donald Trump. So it sets up uh, perfectly for me to be a giant asshole to both of them. But looking at this first part of the speech, honestly, my takeaway is she nailed it. So uh, is it possible to run a good campaign against Donald Trump and expose him for the buffoon that he is and really highlight those negative things and just pound away to the point where you try to make the case to the American people that no, 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 no. You don't even have a choice. You don't even have a choice. I might not be great, but <laughs> you're telling me that guy's not worse? Don't be an idiot. Don't be an idiot. So if she left it there or if she used similar arguments to what she just said there moving forward in the rest of the speech, I'd honestly give the speech an A or an A+. Because, okay, she says he's incoherent. That's totally true. I cannot disagree with that. He contradicts himself every eight seconds. She contradicts herself from time to time, too, but he's significantly worse in that respect. So he's incoherent. Uh, he, she literally used an argument that I've used before on the show that I, I just cannot trust that guy with the nuclear codes. I mean, everything about who he is and everything that he's done proves that he really is super thin-skinned, as she said, and he's the last guy you, you would want to give the nuclear codes to. She says the U.S. isn't a casino, and, it, you know, he says that he would just default on our debt. That's insane. You can't do that. That'll drag down the world economy. That's totally true. And then she goes on to bring up other points that we've made. Hey, uh, he said he's going to torture, and he doubled down on it, and he tripled down on it, and he acted like everybody else is crazy. So you're basically saying we're going to commit war crimes. Meanwhile, uh, the people at Guantanamo, for example, we learned that the overwhelming majority of them are innocent. They did nothing wrong. In fact, we cut deals with warlords in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and they just handed over people who they told us were jihadists. They weren't jihadists. They were just people who were their enemies. So we tortured innocent people. Read the Senate torture report. We, you know, we did hypothermia torture, which ended up killing somebody who was totally innocent. We did anal rape torture. It's just insane stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to do more of that. Well, that's a horrible idea. Uh, she says he's going to murder uh, civilians. He promises to murder civilians. That's true. He does promise that. Now, again, it's a fair thing to bring up. Well, look, she voted for the Iraq war. That killed minimum 200,000 civilians, so it's a weird criticism coming from her. I grant you that. That's totally true, and I go after her all the time for the Iraq War. What a horrible decision that was. But 
it certainly is also correct that Donald Trump said, he said it on Fox and Friends of all places, we have to go after the families of ISIS, not just ISIS, the families. So you want to murder civilians in the Middle East. And then she brings up his goofy quotes. I have a great brain. Who says that? N actually, we have an answer to that. Not somebody that really has a great brain. Can you imagine Stephen Hawking? I have, a, I have a tremendous brain. I have a great brain. People are like, what the fuck did you just say, you goofball? No, but Donald Trump says it. And like, oh, this is Donald Trump. No, that... He's an idiot! He's an idiot. So again, if you, she just left it here. I honestly think it's a great speech. Putting aside, I, everybody knows I'm, I'm massively biased, not only against Trump, but also against Hillary. I despise Hillary. But just judging based off of that clip there, uh, if she runs a campaign like that, she has a very good chance of winning. So, uh, now let's go to a different part of the speech and see how it works out. I believe in strong alliances, clarity in dealing with our rivals and a rock-solid commitment to the values that have always made America great. And I believe with all my heart that America is an exceptional country, that we're still, in Lincoln's words, the last best hope of Earth. We are not a country that cowers behind walls. We lead with purpose and we prevail. And if America doesn't lead, we leave a vacuum. And that will either cause chaos or other countries will rush in to fill the void. Then they'll be the ones making the decisions about your lives and jobs and safety. And trust me, the choices they make will not be to our benefit. Now, Moscow and Beijing are deeply envious of our alliances around the world because they have nothing to match them. They'd love for us to elect a president who would jeopardize that source of strength. If Donald gets his way, they'll be celebrating in the Kremlin. We cannot let that happen. Terrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Because do you see what she did there? So the, the first clip I showed you, the arguments she made were, look, he's a loose cannon. He's a crazy person. I mean, you can't trust this guy with the nuclear launch codes. Who knows what the fuck he's going to do? And, I mean, he said he's going to kill civilians in the Middle East. So the argument is he's a lunatic, he's, he's a loose cannon, he's a crazy hawk, and you can't trust him with this stuff. Well, then, this, just a few minutes later, she makes this argument. Now this is the exact opposite. She goes, I believe in strong alliances. And then she makes American exceptionalism points. I believe America is the last great hope for the world. We're number one. We need to lead. And when we don't lead, there's a vacuum. And Russia and China want to be number one, but we're number one. We need to be strong. So notice the argument she's making there. She's arguing, well, come on. He, he's too non-interventionist. He wants to pull out of the world. Now, she goes on to make that point even more clearly later on, where she says, you know, we can't afford somebody who, for example, says they want to be neutral on Israel-Palestine. So, it, Hillary, you can't at the same time make the argument, he's a loose cannon, he's a crazy hawk, he's gonna, who knows who he'll invade, uh, he promises to kill civilians, he's gonna be too much involved with the military all around the world, and then also, Hey, this guy wants to withdraw from the world. This guy wants to be a non-interventionist. I want to keep America strong and number one. We're the last great hope for the world. And we need to be in control because then somebody else will fill the vacuum. So we need to have control. No, which is it? You have to pick one. But see, that's the thing. This is Hillary Clinton 101. She's trying to have her cake and eat it too. She's trying to attack him from both sides. So she's just slinging mud and she's just hoping that something sticks. But see, the problem is in the process of doing that, you're contradicting yourself. And what she's doing is she's actually exposing that she has no core values. She's not married to the idea of uh, being non-interventionist, as the first clip would point to, or being interventionist, as the second clip would point to. She's just trying to use whatever argument she thinks will get her elected. And in the process of doing that, she's contradicting herself. So at the end of the day, how would I sum up the speech? Here's how I sum it up. Trump is bad, Trump is bad, Trump is bad. Now let me go ahead and contradict myself on foreign policy, and not just foreign policy. Let me just contradict myself on policy. Okay, that's not... That's actually a very, very sad approach. He's so bad, he's so bad, he's so bad! Now let me tell you how my ideas are. He's a loose cannon and too hawkish, 
and he's also not hawkish enough. Which is it? You have to pick one! 